無社工事選挙関係案小林哲信でございます Hello, I'm Teshin Kobayashi at the Master of the Kankyu An School In this session of the Mokichi Okada Lectures we consider the theme Forms of Ma in the context of Japanese tea ceremony I'm joined by Mr. Yasuhiko Saito and show you through a demonstration of tea ceremony how the Ma is variously embodied or enacted in this context. Today I'm at the MOA Museum of Art in Japan. This institution is dedicated to the preservation and promotion of Japanese culture. And has a long history of collaboration with the Mushakoji Senke, which is a parent school of tea of our Kankyu An. Today, the museum has facilitated this session of a tea ceremony using the museum's 19th century tea house known as Shotei and curated the tea room with the implements and artworks from its collection. This is going to be a very unique occasion. I hope the session will give you a comprehensive picture and above all that you will enjoy it. President Saito, it is an honor to receive you today. Thank you for the invitation today. It is my pleasure. This time of the year has a special meaning in the tea ceremony calendar as it marks the changeover of the main utensil from the furnace to the brazier. The early May is also a lovely time with fresh green, which offers a refreshing backdrop to tea ceremony sessions. In this somewhat extraordinary setting, I hope you will enjoy a special moment here with me today. Thank you very much. As we are approaching early summer, we have here the landscape painting by Seshu. Though this is an ink wash painting, the image provokes in our mind the landscape in colors as we see it at this verdant time of the year, like we see green mountains and blue sky. The monochrome in ink is extraordinary in the sense that it changes the perceived colors depending on external conditions, together with the blank areas in which the void stimulates the viewer's imagination. This is a very fine piece of painting. 
It dignifies the space in which to have a tea session. I myself feel very happy and honoured to be given this opportunity to host a tea ceremony in a setting like this. Thank you very much. To me, the alcove area looks like a complete composite work of art. Very true. Notably, they've selected a Celadon vase for this occasion, which furnishes this space with an air of elegance, a style developed before the well-known rustic style. It's a work of art by its own right, and it certainly is a major element making up this artistic alcove area for us to enjoy. This flower, what is the name of this flower? It's Oyama Renge or Magnolia Siboldai. Celadon vases for their elegant appearance are set to go well with plants with a large articulate flower such as peony instead of arranging a bouquet of flowers. So this is a traditional choice. This one here, it's also customary to put a flower still in a budding form. This expresses growth and it conveys this force of life by its bearing that is full of energy in order to open up its petals. The idea behind having a flower in this state is for us to sense the energy. In this sense, it is another form of life apart from us that is present in this space. So we can say this flower is also a participant in this space. The theme for today's session of the Mokichi Okada Lectures by the University of Bologna is the idea of Ma, which relates to many different ideas and contexts. Basically, we think of Ma in terms of space and distance, but it may be interpreted differently in other cultures, and therefore, we're talking about Ma in the Japanese context. Take this painting, for example. A large part of it is left unpainted, as you just said while the image itself is rendered remarkably by the gradation of the ink. And yet, it conveys a world within the frame. This unique perception of space, or ma, is well expressed in this painting. Seshu produced many paintings, and there are ones in multiple colors, but this monochrome composition gives a strong impression that the blank area does not mean a void or nothingness, but rather implies an infinite space behind it. For the flower itself too, this arrangement is so simple. It just uses one or two branches. It reminds me of the flower arrangement style promoted by Mokichi Okara, whose method was rather minimalistic in principle, but it actually creates a world of its own as if by drawing a picture with the materials, using the surrounding space very effectively. This flower makes me think of that. It's true, and of course it's possible to have a more elaborate flower arrangement in these settings, but having only one flower allows us to focus our consciousness. I think it draws our attention to its beauty and enhances our perception of this entire space. Yes, I agree. Well, shall we get started? Yes, we'll move on to the tea.
Would you like to sweeten your mouth? I will now partake in the tea. Thank you very much. It was very delicious. Thank you. This bowl is one of the key era bowlware, and this one is believed to be fired in Korea in the late 16th or early 17th century. Key era bowl is a subcategory of the era bowl type earthenware which is characterized by its yellowish hue of the glaze, as opposed to the standard era bowl, which is more chocolate in color. The form is also typically rounder than the era bowl style wear. 
The bowls that came from Korea were often created for everyday use, so they have a kind of robustness in the form. For this reason, they are not refined. When you put the bowl against your lips, you may feel its somewhat uneven texture. This robustness and roughness, not seeking perfection in form, is another charm that's enhanced in the rustic ambience of this space. I see what you mean. The bowl does have a light yellow tone to it. Well, compared to the standard era bowlware, this glaze is more ochre than chocolate. To see this bowl on its own without comparing, it might not look so yellow to you. Mm. But I also like its subdued and yet strong sense of presence. As you say, some bowls of irable ware, such as this one, are virtually well defined, and yet they do not dominate the space by their presence, and this lightness in their texture is suitable, especially for the tea ceremony of a less formal nature. In this sense, it is quite fitting to today's occasion, the tea ceremony using a brazier. Hmm, so you mean it matches with this time of the year, the early summer season. I see the sliding panel over there. Its green color is very eye-catching. I thought the design complemented this tea bowl perfectly. It's not often that a tea room is decorated with sliding panels with such a bold design. These panels could well be the main artwork in the room. This special arrangement gives a strong character to this space. It somehow gives me the feeling of having tea within a mountain forest. Interesting. It's true that the paintings inspires a kind of outdoor feel. So against this background, this somewhat unrefined bowl of key rubble ware blends perfectly into the picture like a little stone in a grass field. This is such a tasteful experience, to have a bowl of matcha tea in a room and yet feel as if we're out in the garden. The little cake you had earlier, it was shaped like a peony flower. Like the magnolia seabold eye in that celadon vase, peony is also a preferred flower in Japanese tea ceremony. Peony is such an elegant plant that is likened to a noble lady. So, today we enjoyed two most elegant flowers during the session. I see. It's amazing how much thought goes into the preparation of organizing a tea ceremony session like this one. You must carefully plan and make all the arrangements for receiving the guests. It's remarkable to think how much thought and consideration goes into the reception, even before the guest arrives. That's true. For example, today we had a session between two of us, but the audiences are far away in Italy, and this was also taken into consideration in the choice of the cake. The cakes in tea ceremony always represent something, some of them more abstract than others. For the people watching this from Italy, we thought that it would be more enjoyable to have a cake that was based on an easily recognizable motif. Hence, we've chosen one that has the shape of a peony flower. The ambiance is remarkably tranquil and time simply passes by as we enjoy the peacefulness, which I think is a very distinct aspect of Japanese culture. This is demonstrated so eloquently in the tea ceremony, in that the procedures are composed of very few movements, but each action being so refined and meaningful. Mokichi Okara described the tea ceremony as a culmination of various arts. Now, today, having experienced it in an actual setting, I can see many artistic elements here. 
You mentioned earlier that his style of flower arrangement was rather minimalistic. In some sense, our service procedures are also minimalistic, and there seems to be something in common between the two. Dynamic gestures may make the performance impressive, but our school of tea does not have something like a signature pose. It may lack visual excitement, but the movements we make are minimum yet efficient for serving tea for the guests. Well, this painting here, it reminds me of the amb ambiguity that we Japanese recognize as ma. It can mean indefinite, neither black nor white, but somewhere in between, to which we pay so much attention to. This intermediateness, or ma, in our culture also plays a very important part in the ways we relate to each other. Today, I could strongly sense this in your service of making the tea today. In tea ceremony, the tea as a beverage mediates communication between the host and the guest, but other implements and this space itself are also playing their parts in uniting the two parties. Sharing the moment of appreciating something beautiful, something nice, and acknowledging the appreciation with one another, it amplifies the sense of bonding between people and this represents the core value of tea ceremony. In this setting, participants experience inner calm, serenity, feel refreshed and energized. Then the mental state of well-being helps the physical health. I think it is similar in a way to Mokichi Okada's approach to human health. Well, you as a host are expected to receive various types of people as your guests in the tea ceremony. And I can imagine that this is a space which facilitates a neutral ground where the participants respectfully recognize each other's individual differences, but also maintain a sense of overall harmony. I learned that today's session really progressed in this manner. Today, as we can see, the alcove decoration is coordinated with items of similar attributes in terms of the historical periods and artistic taste. This is harmony of a homogeneous kind. Over here, on the other hand, the pot and the brazier are relatively modern while the water container goes back further in periods. Nevertheless, overall harmony can be achieved by careful coordination. It implies that it's possible to have differences to strike harmony. Yes, that's true. By respecting each other for their differences, this is a concept that is fundamental to attaining peace, which is particularly important for times such as today, when the world desperately needs more humanity and care. I think this is very profound and can be learned from a session such as this. Tea ceremony has its roots in the warring period. Therefore, there is a strategic aspect in the practice. There must have been many occasions of crucial sink or swim kind of negotiations and the people used the tea ceremony in that precarious context as a means of establishing liaisons between individuals. There are many episodes of this nature in the history of this country. In this sense, Given that the world is showing, once again, signs of unrest and confusion, I think the ideas fundamental to tea ceremony may offer some valuable insights. Wokichi Okara himself supported the idea that tea ceremonies should be promoted internationally. 
I hope you too will have a chance to make such a difference. Well, because of the current situation, it's not easy to travel around at the moment. But I hope we'll be able to go out soon and meet many different people and build friendship through Japanese tea ceremony. I hope so too. And we'll be more than happy to support you in your efforts. Well, again, thank you very much for today's tea ceremony. Now I demonstrate the closing routine. This rotating movement is for checking the condition of the bamboo whisk. There are various routines during the tea preparation, such as the whisk verification you just saw, and others that employ the Fukusa handcloth. The underlying reason for these movements is to give the guests peace of mind by assuring that the tea is safe to drink. I'm wiping the scoop now, and at this stage the scoop has been used, so I'm literally cleaning it. The same movement is included in the preparation routine, and there I use the cloth to wipe the scoop and the top of the tea canister but that is not for cleaning soiled utensils, but to establish that the utensils to be used to make tea are clean, to show that the tea is not tampered and therefore is safe to drink. This assurance was crucial when the routine was formulated. As the country was undergoing the period of never ending territorial wars. Now it's time for the implement presentation. In a tea room, guests are not supposed to advance towards the host. So the host prepares these small implements for the presentation and places them in front of the guests so that they can have a good look at them.
This tea canister, Natsume, has a lacquer finish with a design of weeping willow in makie, a decoration technique using powder gold. If you look at the details of the design, you can see that the willow tree is depicted effectively using the different hues of gold while maintaining certain portions of the black of the base layer. We can draw a parallel with the concept in relation to the ink wash painting. It is laid out overall, covering the top as well as the size of the container. The design is well conceived that the straight lines of the drooping branches stretch over the round shape of the container so that the weeping willow tree looks almost three-dimensional. Tea scoops are usually appreciated by knowing their given names and who crafted them. This one is made by our Grand Master Futesai Soshu and it is called Zuiun, meaning floating clouds. The names are usually inspired by the pattern or landscape as we call it, showing on the surface of the bamboo. In turn, guests appreciate the beauty in the scoop when it is presented in front of them by exercising their imagination to match the landscape and the name. They may also enjoy recalling their emotional impression later on, evoked by the name. This one in front of us has a relatively lively landscape. It is perhaps the streaks of exceptionally light skin color that conjured up the image of floating clouds. Now, knowing its name, we can imagine how such an image came to his mind when Futesai Soshu named it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So that was the demonstration of Japanese tea ceremony with you and our audiences in Italy. Thank you very much. As we know, our theme today was Ma in the context of Japanese tea ceremony. Ma may refer to space and time and also has various other dimensions. Throughout the tea ceremony session, there was a period of silence followed by a conversation. This contrast between the silence and the conversation itself also constitutes ma. Tea ceremony has a function of bringing people together and there are many cues that initiate or encourage this to happen throughout the process to draw people closer to one another. Then, as they open up to the other, the emotional distance becomes closer too. This distance is also ma. Therefore, it is the ultimate and desired outcome of Japanese tea ceremony to minimize the emotional ma between the participants by sharing this moment together. There is also ma in the sense of the passage of time on an occasion such as today, this slow pace of time allows us to share a lot of things about ourselves, about our interests, thoughts, and so on. Today, we had a tea session in this very large room, but the tea ceremony can also take place in a much smaller room. 
one that only accommodates, say, a few people. In such a setting, I think the approach to Ma, in terms of the spatial, temporal, and emotional distances, will be different. Well, for here today, I think we enjoyed the Ma that was very open in nature. Yes. Yes, it was a relaxed, rather carefree environment we had today. The smaller room you mentioned, which is called Koma in tea ceremony, offers a very different setting. As the host and guest sit much closer to one another, they would inevitably sense an extent of psychological tension. So the states of their minds would be very different from what we experienced today in response to the ma in space and the moment when the tea was served. It is more relaxing to serve tea in a large room like the one we had today, and I enjoyed it myself. I was feeling very peaceful. In this sense, tea ceremony allows you to perceive how we are internally affected by our spatial and temporal ma. When a tea ceremony takes place in, say, a large room versus a small room, do you think it would make a difference in the topic of conversation? Well, in a formal session known as chaji, or a tea function, tea is served twice. First, in a small room, koma, where a strong tea is served, followed by the second service in a large room to offer a service of weak tea. The highlight of the function is the strong tea in the koma room and everything else is organized around it. It is an intense moment, up to the point where the tea is placed in front of the guest, both parties remain silent. The host is entirely focused on his service, and the guest observes every movement he makes while waiting. So there is no conversation at all. The silence amplifies the tense mood in the space, but the tension vanishes as soon as they start talking after the tea has been consumed. This mood change is a moment when the two parties can acknowledge to themselves the unity between them. You mentioned earlier that the Japanese tea ceremony was developed during the warring period in Japan. It was a period of perpetual fighting and conflicts. It is a fascinating thought that the tea ceremony was practiced in this context in such a small room. You would sit in this enclosed space with someone who may actually be your enemy. You're bound to be anxious and yet you act out the service procedures in such a peaceful manner. I wonder if this is something particular to Japanese culture. In that scenario, the guest too is anxious, even to decide whether he should drink the tea at all. I mean, the tea may well be poisoned, so accepting the tea was an act that took courage. As much as the receiving party, the host needs to pay attention to everything to make the guest feel at ease for the ultimate purpose of having the session is to get people closer, to achieve mutual understanding, to build rapport. So he must do everything to remove any possibilities that may raise concern in the guest's mind. This is why the tea service routine was developed with a focus on assurance, and it's been retained in the tradition to this day. Well, time has changed, and of course, we don't have to feel anxious to that extent today <laughs> to participate in a tea ceremony session, so we can focus on enjoying the moment and the artworks that make up the occasion, the flavor of the tea, the conversation. In that way, I guess the tea ceremony was established in the cultural context of Japan. So it comes with various manners related to its historical background. 
However, at the same time, there are many people abroad taking an interest in Japanese tea ceremonies. Considering this, are there any initiatives to make it more accessible to those people so that it can be enjoyed more simply or easily? At the moment, I have a tea ceremony class in Taiwan. Though I haven't been able to travel over there for the last two years because of the coronavirus pandemic, I continue the tutorial online. In Taiwan, my courses are organized in two levels. One is to simply enjoy the experience and the other to learn and master the art, just like the customary way in Japan. I have an impression that despite our different cultural backgrounds, our perception and sensitivity are not very different on a fundamental level. The students do seem to appreciate what constitutes the values of tea ceremony. This is a university program and their university students. We practice tea ceremony together and share an enjoyable time. They're very engaged and also they offer their opinions, reflections and so on during the classes. Based on such feedback, I strongly believe that understanding beyond cultural differences is possible. Perhaps there is something universal in human beings on how we appreciate each other and our mutual understanding of one another. Or maybe it is our emotional ties that form between us, although we are culturally different. What happens in tea ceremony is that the guest watches the host prepare and serve tea for them. They see his or her sincere efforts that unfold in front of them. This sincerity in action perhaps inspires uplifting emotions in the minds of people no matter where they come from. Even if the two people are total strangers to one another, they would share this moment where one thinks of and appreciates the other for the sincerity they experience, which gives a chance to develop a meaningful relationship. I think this would be the most accomplished outcome of having a tea ceremony session. Well, I too have traveled to many foreign countries. And I think Western society is characterized more by its dynamism, which draws a stark contrast to what we did today, that is, the tea ceremony, which is marked by very static, almost motionless procedures. Japan has developed this remarkably distinct cultural value, and yet, as you said, we share the same humanity with people from other societies on a fundamental level. Speaking of a contrast, there is a relativity in the proceedings in the sense that the overall stillness amplifies the impression of an otherwise subtle bodily movement. Obviously, no actions in the service are intended to draw guests' attention to them, but people do respond emotionally to those considered and carefully executed movements. Yes, I see. Well, today, we have presented the idea of Ma in the context of a Japanese tea ceremony as part of the Mokichi Okada lectures by the University of Bologna in Italy. They have been discussing various concepts and contexts that relate to Ma, such as Ma in European architecture, Ma in music, and so on. And we've presented our case through a course of a tea ceremony session. We've also seen examples of how ma in terms of space and time, as well as with reference to emotional distance. We've also discussed that careful consideration in terms of these multiple dimensions of ma lies in the core of practicing the tea ceremony. And all the procedures the manners and receiving the guests are all built upon it. This has been a very interesting discovery for me as well. 
Thank you very much for today's tea ceremony session. My pleasure. I hope that our presentation has given the people watching this video in Italy some meaningful ideas to their further discussions. Thank you. Thank you very much.